Well, I don't have a gavel, so the time having arrived, I'll call this meeting with the Brockton School Committee to order and ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so we're under a little pressure to keep the pace moving tonight, so we'll keep the answers brief. Uh, hearing of visitors, no one signed up, so no hearing of visitors. Uh, consent agenda, block of routine business that the school committee will handle as one transaction unless uh, any member of the school committee would like to remove an individual item from the consent agenda for a separate discussion and deliberation. Any takers? Motion has been made. Second. Properly seconded to approve the consent agenda as whole. All in favor? Opposed? Here we go. Okay, Superintendent, you're on. That's about as fast as I can do it. That was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the mayor is talking about, you know, tonight we're very excited that our uh, varsity soccer team is in the Eastern Mass Finals uh, tonight at Brockton High at 7.30. So we're hoping to be able to go there and to certainly uh, cheer on our team. Uh, they beat Wellesley Saturday, uh, 4 to nothing. Um, and again, they're playing Lincoln Sudbury this evening, and we wish them well. And I think that's one of the reasons our student representative is also not here. So hopefully, there's a good showing from students, parents, and the community to support our team. Um, Those that are soccer, I can make a quick yeah, comment. Oh, absolutely. The soccer fans, the soccer team is exceptional this year. So uh, there was a recent write up in the Boston Globe that said they might be one of the best high school soccer teams ever in the state. So they're that good. So if we have a chance to make it tonight, you really get to see a great team. Go ahead, Superintendent. Good. Um, I did receive a communication from the Prime Minister of uh, Cape Verde, uh, Jose Maria Pereira Neves. And uh, he says here, uh, Dear Madam Superintendent, back to my country, I wish to thank you deeply for the excellent welcome you gave me and my delegation during the visit we made to Brockton High School uh, with many Cape Verdean students. At the meeting, I had the opportunity to thank you for the reception and treatment uh, the students of Cape Verdean origin have had at school and in the city, as well as the contribution that Brockton High School has given to the integration of students and their families in the communities. Looking forward to continuing to work together for the good of students and the respective families. Uh, please accept, Madam Superintendent, my best regards and personal esteem. So Very I'm nice. sure you received one I similar. Similar, yeah. <laughs> So that was, uh, again, a wonderful visit for our students, and we were pleased to, to welcome uh, their delegation. I was told, actually, uh, just this week, or it might have been yesterday, we had close to uh, 40 um, Chinese uh, educators uh, visiting Brockton High School. Again, uh, a wonderful visit, and it's interesting how far people come to really value the education. Uh, they were very impressed with our students, with the welcome they got, with what is happening in such a large uh, urban high school. So it continues, and we're always happy to spotlight what is going on in our school for so many visitors that we've had over the years. Um, one of the most important things I think we've been waiting for, and today was the actual date of the Board of Education, and they uh, voted today uh, 8 to 3 to go forward with what they're calling a new generation of tests. Um, it's called actually, I'm sorry, the Next Generation, and they're calling it the Next Generation MCAS test. And what's interesting, if you go back to the spring of 2014 when we had to make a decision, and we started to talk about the reasons for our decision, one of the things we talked about was whatever the decision was, it would not be MCAS as we've known it, whether it would have been PAC or MCAS. We talked about there being a new generation test. So we really did hit the nail on the head. We're very pleased as a district. I was able to testify last night before the uh, Board of Education at a PAC hearing. And I have to tell you for full disclosure, uh, there were many groups represented. A lot of the teachers unions were there. And there was a lot of talk about no testing. There was a talk about moratorium on testing. There was a talk about children and their love of learning being dimish, diminished because of all of the amounts of times we're spent on testing. And truth be told, 
you know, there is concern for the number of days, if we actually look at the days that our students are testing, not just uh, MCAS Park, but other tests that are required of our students. So I think there's a balance here. We do need to know how our students are growing academically. We do need our teachers to be able to look at data and make decisions based on how their students are progressing. So there is a balance. Um, what we're going to prepare for now, and I can't tell you that I don't have some concerns, the concerns I don't have is that we are very well prepared, which is what I talked about last night at the hearing. By choosing to do PARC, the first year, remember, it was not a choice. It was a pilot. We were told the number of students that would be tested with online and paper and pencil. Um, we were able to learn a lot that first year, hence making our decision. Last year, we also, when we made the decision to go with PARC, five of our schools chose to go online, and that was because of our capacity, basically. But what happened at that time was we saw what our technology department would have to do, what the devices would have to look like. We talk about all hands on deck from our teaching and learning staff, our IT staff, our executive director of data and accountability, all of these people making sure that they were present, especially at those online sites, to make sure that the test went as smooth as possible for our students. So we made a good decision and we've seen it and we really know what we can expect as the commissioner talks about using and staying involved in the PARC consortium. They will continue to use some of those PARC-like questions when they develop this new so-called MCAS next generation test. The thing that we're very concerned about, they talk about 2019 being the date, the administration in spring of 2019. So three years from this spring, it will become an online test for all our students. So what does that mean for our district? It means looking at, and it's not just outfitting our students so that we can continue to share devices. We're looking for one-on-one -on -one devices for our students from the time they come to us in kindergarten. So they're comfortable with answering questions, compositions, writing, understanding how to maneuver with the computer. Making sure that by the time they start taking the test, third, fourth, fifth grade, straight through that high school determination, whatever that's going to be. That's going to take capital. And I, I have to chuckle when the commissioner looks at all of us and says, well, all of you, you must be aware about E-rate. Well, E-rate for us had been certainly much more money in previous years. You know, we're at a point now where E-rate for us is not additional money coming into us. We're pleased with what we have, but it really has been a decrease in what our expectation was for the next few years, and we had to scale back on some of our projects. So we are going to have these discussions. How are we going to make sure, because let's not forget here, this high stakes test becomes a competency determination for our students in graduating from high school. So the plan is not just about devices. We feel confident with our infrastructure. We would have to grow our IT department as we deploy new and more devices. We would have to make sure that in every one of our schools, we're going to have uh, a, a computer uh, person in the school who is looking at instruction and looking to support that kind of online testing that is going to be expected in every one of our schools. So the decision was made today and again it was a strong support. It was an 8-3 to three vote. I'm not sure who the dissenting votes were at this point. I will get that information. It's good to know what's happening on the Board of Education and we have always stayed at the forefront of what's happening. So um, again, at least we move on from here. I will tell you what we consider good news. Dr. Cancel is getting ready to uh, do a presentation to our executive team. We will continue uh, to be prepared to present to the school committee the information as we're receiving it going forward on our present park test. You remember we were held harmless this year. This gave us an opportunity to take a look at the test, to understand what the challenges were going to be, making sure we support our teachers and our principals in how to uh, continue to uh, implement the, the park-like testing. One of the decisions already made for us is in 2016, so this testing year, we do not have a choice. We need to go forward again at the vote of the board with part testing for this spring. We will again be held harmless this year. In 2017, there will be one test statewide, and I say that because this year, communities that did not choose PARC this year are already really kind of behind the eight ball. They haven't seen PARC. They haven't tested their infrastructure. The commissioner is allowing them to make a choice this year of staying with MCAS 
And why you would do that, I can't even imagine if we know that this is the next generation of tests going forward. Or choosing Park, and they would also be held harmless. So going forward in 2017 is when we would have one test statewide, and that's the timetable that they're presently looking at. So again, I think we made the best decision we could possibly make a couple of years ago. Um, we do have concerns, and we'll share that with you. Uh, one of the things that we're seeing is our schools that took online testing, there was a dip in some of the scores that were pretty unexpected when we look at the trajectory of how they performed other years. And we're looking at that across the board at those schools that did reasonably well, and we saw a dip because those schools took it online. So we will be sharing that information uh, with you and get that in your hands so that we can have discussion. Will we continue to be able to have the option to do the pen and pencil? The pen, pencil and paper um, as opposed to the online? Yeah. Excellent question. So that was a discussion no sooner. We had a conference call with the commissioner all over the state today. Um, and one of the things when we can, we can't make the decision, we have to do park this spring, mm -hmm. but we can make the decision, do we do paper, pencil, and online? And again, you know, one of the decisions we, we want to do is to keep moving the district forward to bring on other schools, but we've got some decisions that we need to sit down mm -hmm. and take a look at. We haven't really met with the principals to talk about that, um, and that is what we do have that choice. There were, I sat across from New Bedford at my urban superintendent meeting on Friday. They did park, but they did paper and pencil throughout the whole right. district. They didn't do any online testing. Have they indicated if they're going to continue to do that next year and I stay do. away from the online? I, there's, there's conversation about this, mm -hmm. but as I said, we're, we're hesitant not to move forward with this. Yeah. We're held harmless. We want our schools to see this on, that is going to be the next generation test. So, and that's why I'm saying to you, I think you made an excellent decision. Um, I think there are schools behind the eight ball now. We've had two years, the first year, of course, being the pilot. Last year, not only going forward with PARC, but five of your schools fully implemented online testing. So just one more question. Um, when it becomes fully implemented in 2019? Online. Is it, on, is it going to be only online? Yes. As of today, that's the conversation. And if a school does not have the infrastructure, technology infrastructure to, to implement that, what is the state going to do to subsidize that? Yeah, th that's our conversation today. You know, when the commissioner spoke, you know, the board has voted. Sounds like an unfunded mandate again. And, and again, it was when you go back, we had discussion reminding us about 1998 when MCAS came on board. Did we have five years? I think it was till 2003 when it became a, a mandate. And again, it was pretty equal across the state. You know, everyone has paper and pencil. Mm -hmm. You know, we might have had a little bit more of a challenge, um, and we pretty much overcame that challenge. But this is when we talk about equity in education, yeah. you know, this is exactly what we're talking about. So we were told today, again, 2017, um, it will be all one test in the state, the next generation MCAS. It will allow you to do paper and pencil uh, or online mm -hmm. is, is my assumption in the conversation, but 2019 was online. And that would be statewide. That's going to be a concern. Thank you, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I also um, want to uh, remind everybody that we do have the charter school hearing is coming up on uh, December 3rd. Uh, we are preparing our position papers. We are making sure that, you know, having looked at the charter prospectus, that we have our students and families that, you know, talk about, somebody said to me something about competition. I'm not afraid of any competition. You know, we'll compete with the best of them. We know what we offer our students. We know what our successes are. We know what our challenges are. And again, when we look at this particular version, um, this is not something that, was needed in Brockton. I've talked to people about choice. There are plenty of options for choice for our families. I don't see anything different than what we're currently offering. Uh, it will be, again, nobody wants to hear it, but it does stress a district's budget. Um, I think that has to be something taken into consideration. But we will have our position 
Uh, we're putting together our information and we'll make sure that we have a presence before the Board of Education. I believe it's going to be at Massasoit Conference Center. Uh, we're working with our principals, we're working with our parents, we're working with our students to make sure the message that we always get out there, the offerings that we have for all, all our students in the city of Brockton uh, are well documented at that meeting. So we'll get information to you. I know many of you will want to certainly join us uh, at, that, at that hearing. And the other thing that we're taking a look at, I'm not sure if you've received calls on one of the ways when we look at a difficult budget is we continue to look at the substitute teacher situation. Dr. Moran uh, has met with uh, Sharon Wolder and um, Dr. Murray looking at our high school and our middle schools and it's important for us, uh, especially as we get into the winter season, the flu season, to make sure that we are providing substitute uh, teachers for our middle school, for our high school. We'll continue to look at that budget. It does become a budget stressor again but we will make sure again that we are uh, making sure there's training for our substitutes and we will uh, try to cover those substitute uh, positions as best that we can. And um, looking uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention also. We had um, a couple of things coming up. We have the National Honor Society is going to be on November 23rd. I believe that's Monday evening. Um, at Brockton High School, a wonderful event if you get the opportunity to attend. And I know we also have, I want to say, it's, is it this Thursday, the John and Abigail Adams Scholarship winners. It's close to 300 this year. I don't have, last year we had about 315. There's a little bit less, but 291. Thank you, Mr. Is it your daughter one of our members? Well, that's wonderful. Congratulations. Congratulations. So those events are coming up at the high school. And I also want to give a, a shout out to one of our teachers because these are the kind of staff members that we have. Uh, Nancy Williams is a teacher at the Asheville School. And the other day she was heading to school and came upon an accident involving one of our students on a bicycle. The student was from the Plouffe School. She pulled over, she was able to keep the child calm, you know, attended to the situation when the authorities came. And Michelle Nazrella, as she always did, sent a wonderful note you know, thanking the teacher for stepping in and making sure that the child felt supported until people could get there. Thank goodness the child was okay, went to the hospital, um, was doing well later that day. So there were no broken bones or the child is back in school. But I just want to call out that these are the kind of staff members that we have here. And next, uh, items to refer to subcommittee. So. We had talked about um, a retreat. I know our time is winding down and Mayor, you and I spoke about looking at a couple of subcommittee meetings uh, instead of a retreat. Yes, I think Tom are looking for a finance uh, subcommittee. Fine, and the other one was curriculum. So, with, and we were hoping to schedule them on the same nights. Uh, I know we have a couple of things in curriculum. We're looking at our talented and gifted program. We're looking at our retention. So there are a number of things that we'd like to clear up before the new school committee uh, comes on board. So rather than call it a retreat, we were going to just have some, a couple of subcommittee meetings. What did I have for you? I'm looking for my note. The retreat, unless things have changed, wouldn't be a public meeting, correct? It is. Everything is. Yeah, now. Everything okay. is. Okay. Always has been. If we're all in a room, if there's a quorum in a room and you're going to discuss business or deliberate, right. it's a public meeting. Please. Okay. Unless there's an exception to use under the meeting law. So it's a curriculum. It's policy because of retention, and then the superintendent. Yep. And superintendent's evaluation also. Um, we have a December 15th meeting. We could start earlier. Oh, I'm sorry. That's something concert. else. That's the concert night. I want to address before we leave. Is that not available? That was one of the nights we were looking at. Mm -hmm. yeah, Originally, we talked about the retreat. So right. Could we use that That's for the these subcommittee meetings? December 8th? How long do you think they're going to be? Well, the reason why I'm saying is because I want to do a um, superintendent uh, contract subcommittee. That's just saying superintendent evaluation subcommittee also. On the 8th? No, no, not necessarily. I just didn't know how long they were going to be. So if do we need to maybe prioritize the superintendent contract? Because whatever we decide, subcommittee has to be ratified by the full committee. So maybe that should happen 
before our last meeting as a full committee before the new school yeah. committee members come in. The other subcommittees could happen after that. I think there's a report the superintendent wants to present in finance also for the school committee while the school committee is still here. Okay. Rather well, the evaluation the will be discussed in open session at the next meeting. Right. Then perhaps we'll look at a date so that we have a superintendent contract subcommittee meeting, and that would be obviously an executive session. Um, and then the results of that we can vote on at the second uh, school committee meeting in December. Which is the, the 15th. The 15th, right? Yeah. Don't we have the second and the 15th? Is that first the two days? First and 15th. First and 15th, okay. Yeah. Okay, so. Well, the, um, whatever dates you, you can want to do it, but yeah. I need to fit in a... Um, curriculum and uh, policy. You sure? So why don't we pick? Uh, why don't we pick two two dates? You why don't we pick one for? Oh, I do. Superintendent yeah. contract, and then why don't we pick it one for the other two items? Okay. Yes. Right. No? Can I have one to get in touch with you yeah. for the oh, dates? I know it. So why don't we book the eighth for one of those yeah, meetings? Yeah, I think it sounds like two nights. You look. Yeah. Like four right. Yeah, it is right. two nights. Right. Right, and then okay. that way it can be brought back in front of the committee on the 15th if okay. you wanted to. Okay, so superintendent, superintendent contract on the 8th, and we'll come up with another date for our subcommittee meetings on curriculum with the talented and gifted policy for retention and a finance subcommittee meeting. For the 15th as well. Yes. Yeah, okay. And the other thing, speaking of the uh, December 15th meeting, it is a concert night. Did you want to start earlier? I know that's been the practice in the past. What time could we start? I know some of you are coming from work. We do six. Is that okay? All right, so that'll get us out in time for the concert. So that's on the 15th? Yes. And that's it. Mr. Bandis had asked to have a couple of meetings on the 8th, short of bid review and account review. And he wondered if the subcommittee meetings could start at 6.30. I don't think so. I think you have to go earlier with those meetings. Yeah, if, I mean, like accounts review, we could do in 15 or 20 minutes generally is what those meetings take if we prepare well in advance. So we can do that ahead of like a 6 o'clock meeting. We can do like okay. a 5.45 accounts review ahead of one of those two nights if we okay. start at 6. Yeah. I, can, I can manage that. That's it. That's it? I'm all set. <laughs> you sure? Well, we pared it down this evening. Well, yeah, we appreciate that. And a lot of folks want to make good. the soccer team, so uh, the superintendent uh, was nice enough to reschedule a couple of the presentations that were originally scheduled for tonight, so we'll get them back on the agenda very soon. Uh, new business, does anyone have anything they would like to uh, put on the table during new business? No? Hearing no new business, I'll entertain a motion. Got a motion to adjourn, made, seconded, seconded, all in favor, opposed, meetings adjourned, thank you.